Okay, so now um, we're going to talk again about rigid motions. Um, this time we are trying to play a game, and the game is guess the rigid motion that took place. Um, we have the original, which is in green, and the image, which is here. Um, I, I'm already telling you that to obtain the image from the original in green, a rotation took place. Our goal is to find the center of rotation and the angle of rotation. Um, but be before we do that, I, I want to talk to you uh, and let you know that even if I had not told you that this was a rotation, you could have figured out figured it out yourself. Um, let me explain to you how. I have the original, and as you can see, the original is a concave pentagon. I'm going to call it flags. So I have flags here. Flags. And the orientation of flags, again, is when you spell the word F-L-A-G-S, F-L-A-G-S, the orientation, the pencil is making a movement that is counterclockwise. So the orientation of flags is counterclockwise. Now, let's see what happens with the image. It's pretty clear that the point that goes here is the result of applying the read motion to F. The point that I obtain here is the result of applying the read motion to L. The point that I got here is the result of applying the read motion to A. So this is A prime. This is G prime. And finally, this point over here is the result of applying the read motion to S. So I'm going to call it S prime. So this is flax prime. F prime, L prime, A prime, G prime, S prime, flax prime. So when you look at flax prime, um, and we try to determine its orientation, we spell it again, F prime, L prime, A prime, G prime, S prime. Look at the way I'm spelling it. The same, this was counterclockwise, this orientation is counterclockwise. The orientation that I have here is also counterclockwise. So, now that we're clear on that, we can see that the orientation of the original and the orientation of the image is the same. They are both counterclockwise. So that means that the rigid motion that took place was either a translation or a rotation. But just look at the figure. That's not the result of a translation. You, you can tell that just by looking at it. So by process of elimination, a rotation took place. Okay, so since what we want is to be able to find the center of rotation first. Let me show you how we can do that, okay? The first thing is the center of rotation, wherever it is, is at the same distance from F as of F prime. So we know for sure that the center of rotation is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment F, F prime. Let me let me draw it here with um, our straight edge. The center is going to be in the perpendicular bisector of F, F prime. So our, our first objective is to find the perpendicular bisector of F, F prime. And as usual, to find the perpendicular bisector, we use our compass. We put the sharpened end on one end of the segment, and we put the sharpened end on the other end, the, the pencil, sorry, the pencil end. The sharpened end in one and the pencil in the other one. I move that, let me get it there. So I have this and I draw an arc. Now I do the same, but this time I'm putting the sharpened end on F prime and the pencil end on F. And I go, move it again. And there we are. 
we have found two points where those arcs intersect. If I draw the line that joins those two points, I obtain indeed, let me use the ruler, it has markings but I'm not using them as you can tell. Oh, there we are. The center of the rotation is somewhere in that line. Where? Well, that's what we need to find. So, at least we know that the center is here. We have narrowed it down. So let me erase everything that I did finding that perpendicular bisector, because we really don't need the arcs. We just need the perpendicular bisector. Okay. I don't want my drawing to be too messy. So, let me use the ruler again. Um, here I go. Put this here. There we are. Okay, so now let me see S and S prime. And the center of this rotation must also be at the same distance from S as S prime. So I'm going to find the perpendicular bisector. Um, actually, on second thought, because it looks like it's going to be the same perpendicular bisector. Um, let me use G. Okay. Like I'm changing. I'm changing because S S prime looks very parallel to F F prime. So. Let's do G and G prime. You want something that looks a little bit different. So here we are. I have segment G, G prime. And I'm going to find the perpendicular bisector of G, G prime because the center is also at the same distance of G as of G prime. So that means that the center is on the perpendicular bisector for that segment. So let's find the perpendicular bisector for that segment. So, again, I use my compass, I put one end on G and the other end on G prime. Mm, let's hope we get an intersection there. Now I go G prime and G. I'm going to do exactly the same process. I got two points. This one and this one. So I'm going to draw the line that joins those two points. There it is. Let me be a little bit more specific. I okay. So I have one perpendicular bisector, which is this one, and I have the other one, which is this one. So those two perpendicular bisectors intersect here. The point that I have here is at the same distance of F and F prime, and it's also at the same distance of G and G prime. So that point is the center of rotation. I have found the center of rotation. Let me erase everything now, because now I found the center of rotation. So I erase everything. Um, so I already found the center of rotation. This part of the task is complete. Now I have to find the angle the angle of rotation. I have the center here. It's C. So um, let's let's get this. C to F, that's the segment. And I know that when I rotate F around C, I should have gotten F prime. I know for a fact that that the image of f is going to be f prime i'm going to get that there so the rotation is clearly 
counterclockwise. I just need to find out how many degrees of rotation I use. So um, let's put here my faithful protractor um, in line with segment CF and what we want to measure. Um, it, it really looks um, like, let's, let's make this line long so that the protractor can actually measure that. It looks like it's going to be 90 degrees. I didn't even plan it that way, but okay, well, it seems to be actually just a little short of 89 degrees. So it's 89 degrees counterclockwise. That's the rotation that I applied to flags. So center, see, I found it there. And the angle of rotation is 89 degrees counterclockwise. So that's how you do it. Let me uh, make a summary again for you. Um, I first named the figure flags and I saw where the images of those points were on the final uh, result. I determined that in fact this was a rotation. Um, and now that I know that a rotation is the rigid motion that took place here, um, all I need to do is find the center. Uh, of that rotation. To do that, I found the perpendicular bisector of segment FF prime, which is there, and I found the perpendicular bisector of segment GG prime, which is here. Those two perpendicular bisectors intersected at a point. That point is the center of rotation. And then using the center, and two of the points, one in the original figure and its image on the final result, I measure an angle using my protractor and found the angle of rotation. And that's how you do it.